Back in 2002, Brian Provinciano began work on a small labor of love project codenamed Grand Theft Tendo. His idea was to remake Grand Theft Auto 3 whilst using just a Nintendo Entertainment System development kit that he had created himself. The idea evolved over time, with the GTA 3 remake idea being dropped and a completely new game designed, plus numerous pop culture references from the 80s and 90s being added. Eventually, Pixel and Chiptune artists joined the project to expand the scope and the final outcome was Retro City Rampage, which initially released in 2012 and has seen releases on various other systems, including the Switch, ever since. Shakedown Hawaii is the long-awaited and anticipated sequel to Retro City Rampage. With a 16-bit aesthetic this time and set in the modern day, has it been worth the wait? I'm Glenn for Switch Up. Thank you to the developers for the review copy. And now, let's find out. Aspiring DJ in search of gangster cred and his right-hand consultant. Shakedown Hawaii's story is a simple one. You begin as an aging CEO of a company who has been living off the glories and the profits of his best-selling book some 20 odd years ago and has left the running of his company to others. However, the world has changed and the rise of online shopping and streaming has effectively killed his retail and video stores. Desperate to get back to the top by any means necessary, he steps back onto the streets of Hawaii. In much the same way that Retro City Rampage made pop culture references to the 80s, Shakedown Hawaii's story includes telling nods to the times we live in by parodying things such as online shopping, shareware, small print, day one patches in video games and much more. It tells a much more coherent story than its predecessor. Gameplay wise, Shakedown Hawaii plays from a top down perspective, much like its predecessor Retro City Rampage and reminiscent of the early Grand Theft Auto games Grand Theft Auto 1 and 2. Your character can traverse the city by foot or by pressing the X button you can borrow a car. Early on you will be given a series of quick and simple missions which teach you the basics of combat, allow you to acclimatise yourself to driving around the city and introduce you to the various shops and salons around the island where you can customise your character with new clothes or hairstyles. As well as the main character, you will also control his son at times, whose missions usually revolve around theft and a business associate based somewhere in South America whose missions are much more focused on combat. These ones in particular almost play like cannon fodder mixed with a bit more run and gun action and it's a shame that there aren't more of these as they're a lot of fun. All of the missions only ever last a few minutes each to complete and after about an hour I was ready for them to have a bit more meat on their bones but they never really elevate beyond a very simple drive here, shoot or destroy that model. It's a shame there isn't a little more variety in the missions other than where it is you are driving or what it is you are destroying. Thankfully, however, there is more to the game in terms of the property portfolio. As you progress, you will have the opportunity to purchase certain businesses, which you can then access via the property map with a press of the minus button. From here, you can buy new businesses or upgrade existing ones. Each new business you buy will add to your daily income and buying new types of businesses will unlock opportunities to play side missions separate from the main story. For example, buy a chain of coffee shops and you will then be able to hijack any coffee vans you see driving around and take their resources to your shops, therefore saving you from having to pay those high fair trade prices. Or get into the construction business and you can undertake missions in order to clear sites of trees or derelict, or sometimes maybe not even so derelict, buildings, using a flamethrower of course, in order to build new properties of your own. Each new business venture adds a new revenue stream to your portfolio and allowed you to build enough money to reinvest in further businesses. You can even set up opportunities to multiply revenue streams, for example, by creating gift cards within your businesses or adding clickbait advertisements online. This has that compulsive clicker-based gameplay mechanic of having you wanting to constantly upgrade each building to see those revenue streams increase. As well as buying businesses, you can also locate stores from the property map and shake down their owner. This means offering your protection to the business for a cut of their profit, in a similar way to the Godfather games from a few years ago for those of you that played those. Inevitably, things never go smoothly and a certain amount of persuasion will be needed before the owner will agree. It's when you factor in all of these points that the game really becomes a lot more fun. The main missions are more of a means to an end and having that bit more freedom to complete jobs away from the main story or just explore the island, which is absolutely huge and even has a subway system you can use, that you realise the scope of the game. 
Whilst exploring, you can cause as much destruction and carnage as you see fit, which really ramps up the enjoyment factor. And this seems a perfect point to mention those that will attempt to stop you from causing said carnage. The Hawaii Five-0, the cops, the old Bill, the fuzz, the pigs, yes, the police. Generally, the game is quite forgiving in that you will not be chased every time you smash into another car or hit a pedestrian. Do it in front of a police officer though, and they will pursue you. At this point, you will have a meter in the top right of your screen, showing you how much heat you are currently under. The more damage or destruction you cause from this point, the higher this meter will rise, and the more aggressive the police will become in their pursuit of you. You will need to lose their tail, hide, use a garage to respray your car, or collect a cop coin, which will reset this meter. On top of all this, there are also arcade challenges which charge you with causing a certain amount of destruction within a set amount of time to earn yourself medals, and even the occasional minigame that you will come across as well. Or you could just run about and blow stuff up till your heart's content, that's always fun too. Missions are simple and a little repetitive, and it is a shame that there wasn't a little more variety, but buying new businesses helps alleviate this, and exploring the world and causing chaos is so much fun that gameplay receives 17 out of 20. Movement of your character, whether on foot or in a vehicle, is handled by either the left stick or the D-pad. This is very smooth and driving around the city is particularly enjoyable. The vehicle's handling is absolutely on point and you will be weaving in and out of traffic in no time. The B button allows you to jump when on foot and Y is your attack button. If you have a gun, holding down Y will lock onto your target, allowing you to strafe. The L button will bring up your available weapons menu, whereas pressing the R button will cycle through the weapons you have instead. The map is accessed via the plus button, and you can set a waypoint to a location from here using the X button. The map is a little cumbersome to navigate, with points of interest or particular businesses you may want to buy not as easy to identify as they could have been, but on the whole, controls do everything they need to do very well, and they receive 17 out of 20. Whereas Retro City Rampage used an 8-bit aesthetic, Shakedown Hawaii instead opts for a 16-bit look, according to the game information. Now, I don't know if the team restricted themselves to a development kit that replicated a 16-bit machine accurately or not, but the art style certainly looks closer to 32-bit than 16, or at least somewhere in between. I know that the general consensus amongst a lot of people these days is that pixel art is wearing a little thin, but this game absolutely shows just how beautiful pixel art can look when it's done correctly. The level of detail within the game world is quite astounding, from palm trees blowing in the breeze to the crowds of bystanders at every turn. The city genuinely feels alive. The pixel art is crisp and clean, and the change from fall and bright springtime colors during the day, moving into more muted autumn tones at dusk, really is quite delightful. The cutscenes do not carry quite the same level of charm, but they tell the story well enough. Talking of charm, the current day setting of this game compared to the 80s setting of Retro City Rampage, also costs the game some of its charm. Whereas in the predecessor, you would see DeLoreans, the A-Team's van, and the Ninja Turtles party wagon driving down the road, this time vehicles are a little more generic. This isn't a criticism as such, and if you hadn't played the first game, you wouldn't even think of it. It's just an observation from someone that's played both. Within the options screen, there is also the opportunity to change the color effects. You can choose from home computers to an NES color scheme, through to a Game Boy aesthetic. This is a nice touch, although it's a shame that you need to constantly pause and enter the options screen to cycle through these, rather than being able to do this via the controller buttons. Music suits the gameplay, and as with most games with a Grand Theft Auto vibe, you can change the radio stations while in a vehicle by cycling with the R button. You can choose to have the radio stations available when out of the vehicles too, via the options menu. Visuals receive 18 out of 20, and audio receives 17 out of 20. Shakedown Hawaii costs £17.99 or $19.99, and for this money you get a game with quite simple, fairly repetitive missions at times, but also a wealth of depth and other tasks hidden within as well. With 111 story missions, 15 side quests, 83 businesses to shake down, and over 400 properties to own, as well as hidden collectibles, arcade challenges, and in-game achievements, there's certainly a lot to do. That's before you consider the open world nature of the game, allowing you to walk around and cause some trouble, go for a joyride, deliberately annoy the police and see if you can outrun them, etc. 
which adds a huge amount of replayability to the game, and you will find yourself doing this at times when you weren't even intending to, just because it's fun. Value receives 18 out of 20. To conclude, Shakedown Hawaii is a glorious throwback to the Grand Theft Auto games of old, before movie sized budget, full voice acting, and 3D worlds. With some of the best pixel art available on the Switch, a fun story that looks at consumerism, a host of missions to complete, and a top-down world that is brimming with life and begging to be explored, one thing's for sure, and that is that Brian Provinciano is an absolute master of his craft. Shakedown Hawaii receives a switch up score of 87%. Many thanks as always everybody for watching, please do remember to leave a like if you do like what you've just seen. I've got to be honest, for me I absolutely loved the top down Grand Theft Auto games, I loved the predecessor to this game, and I loved the GTA Chinatown Wars game on a DS, so it's an absolute delight to have such a game on the Switch. Thank you as always to our patrons for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take it easy, and until the next one, happy gaming.